Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the book of the prophet Habakkuk, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not say? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore justice comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. It seems to tarry. Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Reading together Psalm 37, verses 1 through 10. Do not fret yourself because of evil doers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord. And he 
shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord, and put your trust in Him, and He will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is written, that is within you, through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearance of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard until the day that I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me and the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasures entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table. Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have only done what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, you may have noticed that I am not the Honorable Reverend Canon John Crean. Uh, John came down with COVID this past week and um, later in the week, unfortunately, and, uh, and we are going to reschedule because... Uh, he is such a gift to us here in the Coachella Valley. Uh, but uh, you're stuck with me anyway. Faith like a mustard seed. How many times has that one been preached? Of all the things that Jesus has ever said, the saying about faith the size of a mustard seed is probably the least helpful. It's not a bad saying. It's not so hard but because it makes us think of faith as a quantity, as something that we can have more or less of. Usually, we wish we had more, but we often assume we don't have enough. If we had more faith, we could move mountains. And certainly there are many mountains that need to be moved. So in today's passage, the disciples implore Jesus Lord, increase our faith. But he says to them, if you had faith just the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. When I read that passage, it sounds as if Jesus were saying, increase your faith. You don't need more faith. You only need the tiniest speck. It's not about having more faith, my friends. It's about putting our faith in the right place and in the right person. In a book called The Heart of Christianity, uh, theologian and author Marcus Borg devotes an entire chapter to faith. He claims that in Western Christianity, which is our flavor of Christianity, faith has come to mean holding a certain set of beliefs, or believing a set of statements to be true. For most people, being a Christian means we believe in God, we believe that the Bible is a revelation of God, and we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But Borg says for some Christians, that list would be longer, and it might be your list. For some Christians, believing the Bible is the inerrant word of God. Believing in the literal seven 24-hour days of creation rather than evolution. Believing that Jesus was born of a virgin, that he was raised from the dead, 
that he raised the dead, that he walked on water, that he will come again someday. Sometimes Christian beliefs become very specific. Borg writes, believing in infant baptism instead of adult baptism, believing in the rapture, believing or not believing in purgatory. That's like trying to get home on 111 every evening. <laughs> I believe in purgatory. <laughs> the list goes on and on. But as you've probably experienced for yourself, believing the right things is very important to us Christians. But there is a problem. All this emphasis on belief can turn faith into a matter of the mind instead of a matter of the heart. Now, don't get me wrong. We should be grateful that we are Episcopalians, after all, because we are not asked to check our brains at the door. Back in the Middle Ages, the word orthodoxy meant right worship. That is a literal meaning of the word orthodoxy. But it has come to mean something totally different during the Protestant Reformation. It came to, believe, to be um, right belief, orthodoxy, partly because of those Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians were trying to figure out what they believed. Should we baptize infants or adults? Is communion a sacrament or an ordinance? Uh, when I was growing up, you were not baptized unless you were fully immersed. None of this sprinkling people. <laughs> that just wasn't good enough. Another time I was working at a Southern Baptist church and they told me I needed to get baptized again because the first time wasn't legitimate. What to believe? You know, in the Middle Ages, no one questioned the story of Jonah and the whale. It was in the Bible. Of course it was true. But during the Enlightenment, people began to ask, could there really be a fish big enough to swallow a man? And could, could a man really, I mean, think about it, folks, let's be serious. Could a man really live for three days in the belly of a whale? But during the Enlightenment, the only truth that counted was that which could be proven scientifically. In other words, truth was replaced with fact. And so after being run through the gauntlet of the Reformation and Enlightenment, faith has come to mean believing the right things, and believing them no matter what, even if they are not scientifically verifiable. But it has not always been that way. Marcus Borg in his book goes on to talk about, uh, in the Middle Ages there were different words for faith, and I want to talk about two of them specifically. The first word is ascensus, from which we get the word ascent. It means pretty much what it sounds like and what you expect it to mean. Giving one's mental assent to a claim or proposition that is believable, that is true, that you believe. The opposite of this kind of faith is doubt and disbelief. Just think about it for a moment when you are reciting the Nicene Creed. I've heard many of you say, I don't believe any of that stuff. But what does belief mean? Do you believe it to be true? Can something be true without being a fact? Marcus Borg said when he was a teenager, he prayed, he had all of those doubts, and he prayed, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. But he said he began to grow up, he began to read and study, and he wondered, is this really what God wants from us? our mental ascent to a long list of theological propositions, our heads rather than our hearts. Borg says, you can believe all the right things and still be in bondage, still be, I love this, miserable, still be unchanged. You know those folks, folks who can recite the Bible, 
verse, chapter. You know those folks, they know all ten commandments, one through ten, and they know them in order. <laughs> Some of them are still miserable. There are some things that we can and should affirm as Christians. At a bare minimum, being Christian means affirming the reality of God, the centrality of Jesus, and the centrality of the Bible. And look, if you're here this morning and you don't believe those three things, I, I mean, our coffee is not that good at coffee hour. So something keeps you here. Something brings you here. The second word for faith that he uses is visio. And this one is really fascinating. Visio is a way of seeing the whole world, a way of seeing all that there is. And there are many ways that we see the world as Christians. We can see it as hostile. You know those Christians. I hear them on the radio on 111 when I'm in the car. <laughs> you see the world as hostile. Everyone's out to get you. Even God, unless you do the right things, unless you pray enough. You can also see the world as indifferent. Things are just happening. It's science. And God may have created, but God has left the building. And the last way you can see the world is as nourishing and life-giving. That the world has brought all into being and is filled with wonder and beauty. The world loves us, God loves us, and cares about us. Think of the verses that Jesus spoke. Look at the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. God feeds them, God clothes them, God sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Can you see what a difference faith as visio could make in your life? What a difference there would be if we could see reality as life-giving and nourishing. If we have faith the size of a mustard seed. Bohr goes on to talk about his wife, who was telling a story about the hardest thing she ever did was to teach her child how to swim, to relax on his back as he was trying to float, to trust to trust in the buoyancy of the water, to trust that her hands were there to catch him. And finally, when he started to trust and relax, he started to swim. My friends, what if Jesus is trying to tell us that we don't need a lot of faith? We just need the tiniest speck. But we need to put our faith in the right place, not in our abilities, our ability especially to believe, but in God. In God, the one who gives us life and nourishes us, the one who loves, the one who can and does move mountains. Let us put our mustard seed of faith in God and watch it grow. As she was, again, trying to teach her son how to swim, she said, oh, ye of little faith, why do you doubt? I kept picturing that this week of her son floating on the water with her saying, relax, relax. So my friends, I want to leave you with that this morning. You don't need more faith. We don't need more faith. We just need to trust in God and relax. Amen. Please stand and let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism, the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We continue to pray for the people of Cuba, for Puerto Rico, for Florida, for the people of the Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. I ask your prayers for Peggy Cravens and her family, for Alice Slight, Randy Fetterchuk, Sister Priscilla and the, Win and the Windsor family for all who have died in Hurricane Ian. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
Well, good morning. Peace be to all of you. It's so wonderful to see you. Thanks to everyone who came yesterday for blessing of the animals down at the dog park. It was to have started at 8 o'clock in the morning, but people were lining up for a blessing at 7.15. Uh, dog people are early morning people, I discovered, <laughs> which is why I have a cat. <laughs> but it was amazing, and I think the last count was 70 or 80 that we had, and so I think we really found a winner. Uh, our ability to reach out to our community, to go down off of this, our holy hill, and to go into the community, uh, I think was very fruitful. People actually asked, what church is this? And then they asked, what time are your services? And then they, asked, then they said, uh, I think I need to come and visit. So uh, we plant the seed, God does the harvest. That's all that we can do. Uh, there are many other announcements in your bulletin, including um, about the AIDS walk. Suzanne Davidson is wearing a red dress today. Is Suzanne here? Um, there's Suzanne, Suzanne wearing a red dress. Please see her after the service if you'd find, like to find out more about the AIDS walk uh, and sign up. So that, uh, and I will be walking and we will be representing St. Margaret's. Uh, I want to also let you know that today, because it's the first Sunday of the month, we will be doing our 12-step dinner and Eucharist in Lee at 5 o'clock. If you're in 12-step uh, in any kind of group or you support someone who is, please come and join us for a rich conversation and just fellowship. It's a wonderful time together. Lastly, I want to just bring your attention to St. Margaret's Day, which is not far away. I mean, Christmas is only, what, 11 weeks, so... Uh, St. Margaret's Day is even less than that, but this year there will be a new edition, which is an auction called Maggie's Treasures. So we need a couple of things. We need wonderful prizes that people are going to want to uh, bid on. And so um, please see Lynn, um, Lynn Rauch over here. Uh, if you have an idea for a prize or you have access uh, to something that's really going to get people excited. Having this auction for St. Margaret's Day is one of our ways to reach, uh, to, to meet our funding gap. We have a long-term solutions group and a short-term, and this is a short-term solution uh, to our funding. But the most important thing is not just fundraising, but friend-raising. So be thinking about who you would like to invite to that event today. Kathy, please come and share about Read With Me. Good morning, I'm Kathy Copeland, normally at the 8 o'clock service, and I'm here to tell you about a ministry here at St. Margaret's, Read With Me. Read With Me is a nonprofit volunteer program which was started in 2004. <clears throat> Our goal is to improve the language skills of the elementary children, most of them in the East County, who come from low-income, limited English-speaking families. At the present time, we, over, we have, right now, 340 volunteers serving 15 schools throughout Coachella Valley. These volunteers have been recruited by eight local churches, St. Francis Sacred Heart, Our Lady of Soledad, St. Margaret's, Palm Desert Presbyterian, Hope Lutheran, Southwest Community, and Palm View Friends Church. Our volunteer time runs from November 1st through the end of April. Most of us who do volunteer are in the schools from 9 to 11. Oasis is the school St. Margaret's helps, and it is on Tuesdays and or Thursdays we go out. We work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups to improve their fluency, to read, comprehend, and speak the English language. Most of the students still speak Spanish on the playground and at home. So the only time they're really trying out the language and see if they can do it is when we're there at the school or with the teacher. Most students lost at least one year during COVID since our research indicates that students who are not reading at grade level by third grade will drop out of school before high school graduation. We have some catching up to do. I see a few of my former volunteers here. I have Betsy over there, Roger, 
wave. He was there. And last year's Volunteer of the Year for St. Margaret's, Eileen, right here. And she's already out at the school. This is your opportunity to help these students achieve their potential. If you love to read, are willing to give a few hours a week, please see me on the patio after the service. You will be glad you did. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. It was a delight to go to their awards luncheon this past spring. Eileen, it was so good to see you there and receiving a Volunteer of the Year Award. And our own um, Betsy, where is Betsy? Uh, I'm sorry, Betty. There's Betty in the back. Uh, Betty Baxter received the uh, Ambassador of the Year recently for the Palm Desert Chamber of Commerce. So we have a lot of wonderful people. <laughs> Lots of members who are spreading their faith throughout the community in various ways. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift 
To show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with Peggy and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Please stand, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tom and Betty, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ, body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share in one bread, one cup. Friends, life is short and we have but little time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us so be swift to love, make haste to do kindness, move urgently to lighten the burdens of others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.